Overpaying for anything sucks, especially socks. So why pay $45 for a single pair of grip socks when you can spend less than half? Pure Grip Socks Pro feature our best materials for optimal fit, moisture wicking, and performance at a fair price. Just $16.99 a pair at puregripsocks.com. Does the perfect football boot exist? I think that's a question that will always be up for debate simply because everybody likes something different when it comes to fit, feel, and I guess certain performance characteristics. But when you're talking about something that is lightweight, thin, with a leather upper, I'm not sure that it gets more perfect than these right here. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to an absolute sleeper of a football boot in the Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 4, the non-beta variation of the fourth generation Morelia Neo that gets no media attention whatsoever. Mizuno themselves haven't promoted this boot once, but look at it as the purest variation of the Morelia Neo and that it swaps out the one piece upper construction for a traditional youth throat design as well as some differences in regards to overall materials. It's certainly not inexpensive with a retail price of $290, but that is $30 less than what you will pay for the beta variation of what is admittedly a similar pair of football boots. And considering the high price tag of both versions of the Neo 4, I definitely think that the more tech focused beta variation might appeal to a lot more people. And like I touched on at the start of the video, personal preference is a huge factor. But if you're asking me, if you simply want the best of the best in terms of what this style of boot has on offer, materials, build quality, touch, fit, comfort, everything about this football boot, is nearly perfect. If you're curious to know why I think that's the case, stick around, we'll be going over all the details, including comparing them to the previous generations, as well as take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more, please stick around, watch the entire review. And if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can pick them up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes via the first link down below. And as always, if you enjoy these brutally honest reviews, don't forget to drop a like on this one and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots of 2023. To start things off, I just wanna put it into perspective as to why Mizuno is so different from every other brand on the market. This is, of course, their latest made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 4, released in 2023. And this is a 2013 release of the OG Mizuno Morelia Neo, with the Neo itself actually coming out for the first time in 2010. And as you can see, side by side, visually, there aren't a ton of differences between them. So effectively, what you have between these two football boots is 13 years of refinement. In other words, if you have a great design for a pair of football boots that offer the feel and performance characteristics that everyone is looking for, does it make more sense to make huge changes and completely redesign the football boot or make small changes over time to make a better version of the original design? That, in a nutshell, is what Mizuno is all about, at least when it comes to the Morelia Neo series. And even when comparing the Neo 4 to the boot it replaces, in the Made in Japan Morelia Neo 3, you're only realistically going to find five differences that at the end of the day are all relatively minor, but in my opinion, do make for a slightly improved product. Which is crazy because I already thought the Neo 3 was one of the best football boots I've ever worn. Of course, the original recipe for the Morelia Neo series remains intact for the Neo 4. You're still going to have the incredibly soft and very thin kangaroo leather in the forefoot and toe box area with a synthetic material through the midfoot, different from the beta variation in that you're gonna have a textile based material. This is much more leather like, and that's difference number one compared to the Morelia Neo 3 is that they've actually made this synthetic leather material ever so slightly thinner. Again, it's a very subtle difference, and unless you had the Neo 4 on one foot with the Neo 3 on the other foot, it would be almost impossible to tell, but I do really like this material paired up with the kangaroo leather rather than the textile, and that the touch in general just ends up feeling a little bit more uniform, and also the grip levels stay more consistent across the entire foot. If you're looking for a thin touch on the ball, not only are these fantastic, but they're also very unique in that the softness of this 
this kangaroo leather, a material that is typically associated with being bulky and padded. Well, to say the least, it's pretty much the exact opposite of that. It's incredibly soft and very, very thin. So you're still getting that little bit of a dampening sensation that you expect from kangaroo leather. But for the most part, the touch remains incredibly thin and very barefoot-like. Another huge difference compared to the beta variation is going to be that more traditional U-throat construction, which of course does relate this back to the pre-beta days of the Morelia Neo series, where you are going to get that standalone tongue and then the central lacing system with that zigzag setup that runs nice and deep and does an excellent job of holding your foot in place. The tongue is also made from the same material as the synthetic through the midfoot, super soft, super pliable, and again, just matches the thickness very consistently. Despite this upper being incredibly soft with the laces tied tight, these boots are remarkably responsive. I would argue the most comfortable boots on the market that also deliver on such a level of lockdown and responsiveness where it really does feel that the second you react is the second that the boots react. Of course, the low cut design does remain intact, although you will notice a very subtle difference coming from the Morelia Neo 3, where you did have this kind of edge in that knitted material that flowed into this extension piece at the rear. That edge has been removed and you basically just have that synthetic leather rolling over the top, basically giving you this kind of seamless edge where of course the inside liner is this nice padded microfiber material. And then they just added the little bit of knitted material at the back, kind of to give the Morelia Neo signature heel tab, which personally I really like the look of. And in general, this design, I can't say feels better or worse than what they were doing before, but visually I think it just looks a lot more premium. Internally, the heel liner is perfection. It's made from some of the softest microfiber material in the industry with the perfect amount of padding, the shape they've absolutely nailed and from a comfort and heel lockdown perspective again in a football boot as thin and light as these are it really doesn't get any better than this and then the insole fully removable another change coming from the previous generation so this would be change number three instead of that mesh liner on the surface you're going to find that soft microfiber which i think feels a little bit more premium and in general does grip your socks that little bit nicer also the insole itself it's made from a decent layer of this white foam. Again, a little bit more heavy duty than what you're typically going to find in a lot of lightweight speed boots, but in general, really high quality. Which brings us to the base of the boot and the fourth change coming from the previous generation, and that is the new Morelia Neo tooling, where you will notice that it does maintain an external heel counter that's been reinforced in a slightly different way, but ultimately feels the same and is also shaped the same. And then the sole plate, again, is stiffened through the midfoot and heel in a slightly different way, but I can't say that they feel any different whatsoever. If you've worn a Morelia Neo, Basically, since 2010, you kind of know what to expect here and that it's nice and solid through the midfoot and heel and relatively flexible through the forefoot. If you're looking for that kind of spring back effect that some of the more modern speed boots have on offer, this, I would say, trends on the more traditional side of things in terms of just being really natural underfoot, which again, works extremely well with the super soft and pliable upper that they have here. And then of course, the stud pattern, something that's very unique to the Morelia Neo that you won't find from just about any other speed boot and that is conical studs running all the way through, including in the heel. So despite this definitely looking more traditional, the length of the studs as well as the positioning of them does make for more aggressive bite than I think a lot of people would expect, but still that freedom to twist and pivot that so many speed boots with these really aggressive blades don't necessarily have. And I'm not saying that this is better than bladed studs. At the end of the day, it's very much a personal preference thing, but don't be deceived by what has been marketed as quote unquote better in bladed studs for a pair of speed boots because the performance from this stud pattern is still top notch. Which brings us to the weight where I personally wouldn't expect much of a difference from the previous generation, but we'll let the scale do the talking, both in the same size 9.5 US. We'll start off with the previous generation Morelia Neo 3. They weigh in at 7.2 ounces, the equivalent of 204 grams. So on par with most top end speed boots for the record. Then we'll throw on the new Morelia Neo 4. And you can see that they weigh in at 7.05 ounces, the equivalent of 200 grams. So you're ultimately talking about a very small difference in weight in favor of the new model. They have managed to shave 
a couple of grams despite the design and general construction seemingly being so similar but overall both of these boots are super light and again despite the old school material that is kangaroo leather being used on the upper they're pretty much as light as any speed boot out there when it comes to the fit and feel on feet if you can imagine the most comfortable pair of football boots you've ever had whether it's your current pair or a past pair i can almost guarantee that these fit better and are more comfortable there is absolutely nothing that i can criticize about the morelia neo 4 when it comes to fit and overall comfort it is just ridiculous the kangaroo leather in the forefoot as soft as it gets the synthetic material through the midfoot incredibly comfortable wraps your foot perfectly isn't stiff in any way but still provides a remarkable level of responsiveness the sole plate is perfectly shaped it's super flexible the heel lockdown and general comfort is phenomenal and even the option of that additional lace hole at the top should you require a little bit of extra heel lockdown is an awesome option to have as far as how they differ if at all coming from the morelia neo 3 they replace Place, I definitely find that the toe box area is slightly wider and maybe a little bit more squared off particularly at the end which just allows for a little bit of extra width it doesn't really mean that much in the long term because the leather itself will stretch and form to the exact shape of your foot but in terms of out of the box comfort personally for my feet your mileage may vary depending on the specific shape of your feet these are just that little bit more comfortable than what was already an incredibly comfortable pair of football boots out of the box in the Neo 3. From a width perspective, these have plenty of width to them, where as long as you don't have ridiculously wide feet, these are gonna work well for just about anybody. And I think what's so cool about the general shaping of this boot, when you combine it with the materials that they have, you get that tight one-to-one -one fit that you expect from a modern pair of speed boots without that sensation like they are restricting or squeezing your feet. There's a perfect wrap, no extra space in the boots whatsoever, but they still maintain a remarkable level of comfort, which is just so impressive. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US. And just like the previous generation of Morelia Neo, they still run just a little bit long, maybe not even a quarter size. And for most people, I still recommend going true to size. I'm personally wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US. So unless you're wearing your boots currently in a size that is half a size too big, for the vast majority of people, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. The football boot industry has become so much about new performance enhancing technologies, some that you can feel, some that you can't. And as much as I appreciate a new piece of tech that legitimately provides a noticeable element to the experience of playing in a pair of football boots, there's also something to be said about perhaps a low tech boot, which I don't necessarily think this is, that you can just put on your feet and forget about. The Morelia Neo 4 is that boot. The comfort and fit is second to none and absolutely nothing about them feels bad. I've never been one to recommend wearing a new pair of football boots straight out of the box and right into a match, but in the case of the Made in Japan Morelia Neo 4, you can absolutely do that. If you're after a pair of speed boots with a kangaroo leather upper, this, in my opinion, is the pinnacle.